How's it going guys? So today, doing a bit of work on this Fiesta. It's a Mark VI. We're doing a lower ball joint on the front arm on the passenger side. So I've got the joint here. I thought I'd do a little video of it for you. See if I could save you some money. Well, let's get this open. I've been to my local motor factors and bought a couple of these. And we're already done the other side. It was a real pain, I must admit. Right, that's what we're replacing. You've got the three bolts that go in there, slides in the arm, and you rebolt it up. But it's not as simple as that, because the ones that are in there, have got rivets on them. You need a grinder, you need to be handy with the grinder and skillful and get in there and cut it off. And yes, the pain. You've got to disconnect the steering arms, stuff like that. But this is what you get in your box, and we'll have a little whip through it. And let's see if we can save you a bit of money and hopefully you can do it yourself. Because I know things are not too great at the moment and something like this could cost you a couple hundred quid. You know, and it's, I'll do my best to save you a few pennies. More like notes really, but <laughs> let's go. Let's get this wheel undone and let's see what we can do. So don't bother with the old spider braces. Get something like this on your wheel nuts like so. 17 mil, lean into it, put your body weight into it and undo it. Once they're all loose like so, keep yourself a jack, I'll grab mine. If you're not used to using a jack under the car, underneath the seal, you've got a little little point with a notch cut out of it where your jack goes from in your boot. Put your jack on there and you won't bend or dent anything. And away you go, up you go. I'm actually doing a build on this car, I'm doing a series on my waterside workshop. But I just thought I'd drop this in for everyone. Here. What I'll do if he repairs herself, as I do on the channel with lots of cars. But this is you know, a bit of a rebuild, I've done a load of paintwork and stuff like that on it. Wheels, tyres, brakes. Changed bumpers, done all sorts of stuff. <laughs> right, so get it in the air. Like so, so you've got plenty of room. Push your extendable arm in. Spin it round, nice and easy to get them off. What I always do is, down there on top of the jack, you don't kick them around then when you're underneath a car doing other stuff. Spin them all off. Nice and easy. Make them off that easy, as you see, they just fall off. Some can be a bit tighter than others, but most of them should come off like this. If not, a bit of WD or something like that. Soon throw them up, but you shouldn't have any trouble. Simple as that, put that out of the way. Kick. One swift kick to your wheel, wheel out the way. In my case, these wheels are not going back on. I've got some new, brand new tyres and wheels over there that I'm putting on. So I'll get that completely out of the way. And I'll come and get you and we'll go in close and I'll show you what we're actually gonna be doing. So if you can, grab yourself. Some of the lay on. I've got an old boot liner here that I use. And we're going underneath. And as you can see, that joint there with the chalk on it is an MOT fade. It hasn't actually got any play in the joint or anything, but this rubber, as you can see, I can open up my fingers. It's completely gone and absolutely useless. So you, you can actually undo here, undo down the back there underneath and take that whole arm out and slide the whole lot out but I like to leave it all in and take it apart while it's on the car and leave it on the car so that's what we're going to do we're going to undo this one now you will have to hammer this through and actually mess up the bolt etc and replace the bolt which I'll show you in a minute 
but that's the only way to do them because they just get seized in and don't want to know. Normally you can get this nut to come off, but you can't normally get the bolt moving, even with a load of heat and stuff like that. They can be a pain. So let's go ahead, get some tools out, and let's see what we can do. So what I do is I get a socket on this bottom one, which is a 14. You might have to put a 15 over at first and clean all the rust off, which is what I do. And then I get a 14, hit it on. Get it on there nice and tight if you can. Get your ratchet on. And away you go. Ooh, I think we actually slipped. It can be a real pain sometimes you have to cut them off. But I don't really want to cut it off because I want to use it to hammer it through on the bottom. Get it on there the best we can. I think what I'm going to do is get an extension. Because that's just in the way of the caliper there. It's making the head a bit twist. Oh, nope, it's going to slip. Right, okay. Going to have to get one of the old um, night extractors out. Okay, so this is quite typical on the old Fiestas. They always seize up. So I've got a little blowtorch here. You can buy these from sort of DIY centers, B&Q, them sort of places. Put a little head on top, give them a little shake, turn the gas on, and away you go. Get down on that bolt and burn what you can away. Get it warm. That should loosen up slightly, get rid of some rust. I'll probably do that for five minutes off camera, just trying to show you what we're doing. And this is the extractor kit. They basically got these sort of spine heads and these little bits here, just grip onto the nut and pull it undone without it slipping. This one's actually an Irwin kit, it's quite a nice kit. You basically put it over the top, like so. You have to tap it on. <clears throat> Let's put the adapter on, so I'm using the bigger socket here. Roughly line it up. knock it in position like so and once you basically got that on and heat you just oh jesus that's going they're always really tight and rusty like this on these fiestas oh and away it comes Whew. nearly off not the end of that joint though, that's the trouble. If I take you a few attempts, don't think you're doing anything wrong, they're just a pain. I work on cars every single day, and these are still a pain to me. Just not nice to do, they just rust up like mad. Once you get them going, I mean, I've got this one halfway off now, and once you get them going, that will, that will keep turning. But that will fight you all the way. Oh, and you get to the point where it's off. Look at the state of that nut. And obviously they're, they're lock threaded in there. No, you ain't gonna use that again, because they're just useless. You can get a couple of hits on this now if you can get your hammer in there. Let's give that a couple of clouts. Not easy. You have to keep clouting it. 
keep heating it up, keep clouding it. And that will basically, in the end, that will start to move and that will start to come out. And you can just hit it through with a punch. And then that nut and bolt is actually scrap. And you basically move on to these ones, which you can go and buy. This one actually says focus, but it's the same Fiesta one. You get a new pinch bolt and a new nut. But we're not at that point yet. We've got to get that out as yet. So I'm going to heat that up, give it a few hits, clear that through, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I brought you back in on this bit because I've been under there. I've had the old heat gun on there for probably 15 minutes, getting it red hot. I then WD'd it. And we're talking about this bolt here we're trying to knock through. And what it's done is, because I've been hitting it, because I've been literally getting here and I've been slamming the bolt. I spent upwards because it's hot. So it's moved, so I know it's free. So now I've got to get the old cutting disc on it, cut the end of the bolt off because it's sticking upwards. And then that should free the bolt off. Basically got to get it so it's like a flush, again, not sticking upwards. And then hopefully, we should be able to knock it through now. So we'll get the old chisel. And a punch. So I can use this chisel from the other end and on the end of the nut. And I can use the punch, which is this to knock it through. So that bolts out after a lot of backwards and forwards horrible stuff. What I've done in the end is I cut either end of the bolt off and knocked it that way, knocked it that way, and out it came. Just persistence with these is an absolute pain. They always have been, and probably always will be because they're going to be getting worse. <laughs> Apart from the ones that have already been changed, obviously. So next thing you're going to need is a ball joint splitter, which is this beast. And basically, get underneath, slide it between the ball joint and the hub. Simple as that. That splits that joint. And that joint is now away from the hub. Now the only way to get that down and properly out of the way is to put something there and I'll use a piece of wood. And what I do is I find somewhere to get it under. So you can pull that, the joint away from the You're basically just trying to pull a joint away from the hubs so you can work on it. Can be a pain, don't get me wrong, if you've got two people, definitely easier. What I'm going to do is I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to push the, the joint down. It's hard work because I've got to try and balance on stuff as well. I'm trying to film and show and everything all at the same time. I'll bring you in close and show you what I've done. Okay, so what I've basically done is we've got the joint out away from the hub. As you can see, I've got a piece of wood underneath the anti-roll bar and underneath the steering arm. That just pulls that away from the hub enough to get to where we've got to go next, because the next thing we've got to do is see these little humps here. 
this little hump sticking up all the way around. Oh, there's three on the top, and there's three underneath. And we've got to grind all of them off, and then open up this channel, which is quite hard. You have to get in there with chisels and all sorts and lift them open, and then knock this joint out, and that's that joint out. This is one of the harder bits, apart from the horrible bit up there. <laughs> like I say that's definitely not a nice job. But we are getting there, and this is the only way to do it, basically. I melted this slightly when I was heating up that joint, so I'm just going to put a bit of sealer over the top of that, just to make sure I've got a teeny little pinprick hole there, which you don't really want. So be careful when you're doing that. Right, let's see what we can do then. Now I'm probably going to get in a wire shot a little bit under here but basically what I'm doing is I'm getting in here with the grinder with a cutting wheel on and I've got to cut them little lumps off. doesn't matter if you damage the old ball joint because that's not doing anything. to do as you can see very awkward to get in there but the only way to do it so you have to get them nice and flat you've got another one at the back there you've got to get in and get done as well so we'll get in there get them done I'll take you in and show you afterwards so I'm just having a break from cutting at the moment I'm just going to undo the steering arm it's a 15 mil socket You have to undo this because you can't get the to line the bottom ball joint back up when you put the new one in. You need to be able to move it around a bit and this doesn't allow you to do it and makes it makes it more awkward. So I just whip this off. Try not to damage it obviously because you've got to reuse it unless you're replacing it. It's quite tight. So what I've basically just done is I've undone that nut there. I've hit the side of the joint here and it's popped out. It is loose, even though it doesn't look like it. <laughs> just caught up slightly. And as you can see, it's nice and free. You just plonk it out of the way on your piece of wood and that allows you to move your wood around under here and push the arm down even further because the further away you can get that arm and this whole leg the easier it makes cutting them down there okay so now we can move our leg I've pushed it over to the left hand side I've slid a piece of wood in up and under there next to the drop link and I can now get to this top one here and this one here a lot easier than I could with all this lot in the way. So that's how to get to them. Let's get them cut out. Ooh, okay. It's hot work. Carl's saying 24 today, so it's pretty hot in here today. Let's chop some of these back. cutting these off around the top you'll see like a circle around the bolt hole of where it was so once you get to that then they should 
when we chisel it in a little while, they should lift up and over that bolt because the bolt bit stays in the middle and you have to lift this arm up and down to slide it out because that stuff's so tough. It don't really move round. So that's how you sort of work that out. It's hard to keep a, a light in the right places for you. Everywhere's plastic. <laughs> Stamp there, like. disc is getting a bit small which is why it's causing me hassle. If I had a bigger disc on I'd be able to get into the areas but I can't quite get there without touching the wood or the, the centre bit on the metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my left knee and while I'm doing it I'm going to literally push it out to the left like that and give me a lot more space. Honestly, I'll bring you close and show you what I mean about them circles because that is literally the only way you'll get them out. So as you can see on top of the bolts, see where I've got a circle around them? You need that circle because that literally won't lift off. If you look at our back one there, we haven't got the circle. It's not quite enough. So I'm going to have to do that one slightly more. It is there, but maybe not enough to get any separation but we'll have, a, we'll have a quick go and see if we can separate them slightly so this is the next stage now remember i haven't cut the bottom ones off yet and i've still got to do that but i'll do that off camera you ain't going to want to watch me doing it all the way through basically you've got to get your chisel in these and open these up you're basically lifting it off the top of where you've got your circles on the top of them bolts Don't get me wrong, it's not easy. Saying that, that one actually went off quite nicely. So that one's lifted quite well. If you would start to move like it has there, just move it back again. Sometimes I'll use this and get right in there. doesn't really matter what you're using now you're just lifting the arm off the top of them circles basically so as you can see if I bring you in close see where that circle's now starting to disappear through there basically you've got to get every single one of them out including the back ones which can be a pain you might have to get a long chisel in there and get it lifted it can be a right pain but basically just open that up and knock it out. It will take some time and effort, but they will come out. 
and this is basically where you need to end up. What we've basically done, this is pretty much out. I've been chiseling through there, lifting this up, chiseling over there, chiseling over the top. Same down that side. I've had chisels up in the top like that. I've had a big one up and over the side like that, which helps you bend the plate upwards. Basically, you're just opening up the plate until it lets it off what you've got left of the studs in the joint. Quite red hot. But that's out. Obviously, now you've got to flatten this back down because you want it to be shut, not open wide. Got a few swift hits. Like so, sorts that all out for you, and you're back to where you started. Now these, these arms are really tough, I mean, don't worry about whacking them around with a hammer and stuff, because it's not going to hurt them. And then you've got your new joint, make sure it goes in, and it goes in there quite nicely. Tiny bit of play, but that little bit of play will get pulled up by the bolts. If they don't reach, you have to hammer it down a bit more. And basically what you're doing is you're, you're putting a bolt in through the top, like so, so it sticks out the bottom. Then you want your washer underneath that. And then your lock bolt goes on the bottom of that. And that's as simple as that with them. But obviously you've got to do all three. And because I've done it a few, a few, probably a few hundred times before, Probably a few thousand in my time. <laughs> all minor, all hammered back together and that's all meeting up nicely. But if you find that your bolts don't reach through, all you've got to do is hammer the top down a bit more, hammer the bottom down a bit more until you're into place. So again, one more time, bolt through the top, nice and easy, washer on, lock nut on the bottom. And then finally you get to use your new pinch bolt. So you have to make sure your ball joint is right in. There's like a little groove in the top of your ball joint. Which is that there. Side of your bolt needs to sit down the side of that. And that stops it from getting pulled out. So you basically line it up like so. Remember which way it came out now. Are we round with it? Always wanted to go back in the same way it came out. Line it up so it's coming at the other end. Gently tap it through and it should be sticking out like so. Put your new lock bolt on the end, find your tools. Look okay, at what size they are. Uh, I know these are a 16 because I've done the other side. He says when well, this one's a 17. <laughs> Stranger, they're the same parts have different parts on them. And then basically you just do that up till it's all nice and tight. If the other end spins like this one is, then you just put the old tool in the end of it. Or just put your thumb on it, stop it from spinning. And away you go, do it up. And that's that part done. And then obviously once that's all done up and dusted, all you've got left is this arm here, which you just point upwards. Get it to line up, knock it through, put your nut on, and hopefully that will just wind down. If 
this does become a pain and starts spinning like that then you need something under here put some weight on it do it up that should sort it sometimes a couple of a couple of hits can sort it other times like I say you need some full on weight which I'm going to need by looks things to be able to do it back up and then basically once you've done that wheel on drop it on the ground wheel trim back on if you've got a trim or if not an alloy and basically job done that's pretty much the end of the process you work your wheel on etc etc let your jack and stuff down make sure your wheel nuts all nice and tight and away you go off down the road so I'd like to say thank you for watching and hopefully I've saved you a bit of money if you like the video and what I've done hit the old thumbs up and if you're not subscribed why not subscribe because I do all sorts of different cars all sorts of different jobs from this sort of mechanical stuff engine bay stuff inside cleaning interiors seats bodywork detailing you name it <laughs> so can help in lots of different ways so if you like that sort of thing give us a subscribe and i'll see you soon in the next video bye for now